So here's the moment we've all been waiting for, the live read of Mr. Eric Edwards, a mur convicted murderer, snuffer of an American life form, as letter, a uh, le letter. Uh -huh. What's my name? Mr. Er. Uh. <laughs> How is life treating you? Fine, I hope. As for me, just taking life one day at a time. Man, that was one badass letter you wrote, you, you wrote me. I'm not even going to try and top that. You took me all over the world, your place, to places I've never, I've only dreamed of going. In reading your letter, I see that we have a few things in common. I also like to travel the world, if only by, if only by, if only, if, oh, if by only through letters. Or through pictures and letters. I love scenic views of mountains, waterfronts, skylines, mass, skyscapes, landscapes, and anything else that could capture my attention and my imagination. Being in the current situation of a confinement, being in the current situation of confinement, um, that I am, I am in, that's how I keep in touch with the real, ever evolving structure of the real world. Though pictures and through pictures and to be honest, trying to get people to send me pictures at this moment is like me trying to find a pot of gold. <coughs> Aw, you kill someone and you want to you want people to treat you like a girl pot of gold. A creepy pot of gold. Hmm. I also battle with a mental dysfunction, as my country would call it. America will call it. Um of bipolar disorder. I actually have the word bipolar tattooed on my right wrist to keep it real. I kind of like the name Spacey K. Gow. It has a nice ring to it. What most, what most I like about your letter is that you is that to me. Is that to me? It sounds like you're not afraid to be yourself. To me, you're not afraid to be yourself, and that speaks volumes to me. We have a we have a stereotypical society that normally paints an imaginary picture of what is normal and what is therefore what is normal and therefore people try to make more of <coughs> boy this guy has a funny way of writing we have a stereotypical society that normally paints as an imaginary picture an imaginary picture of what is normal and therefore people try to make their image into which it is a trend of what the, what is accepted in uh, in today's culture. So basically, people just try to conform to uh, what the pre preconceived notion of normal is. And I guess writing letters that troll inmates to remind them they're in there forever is perfectly normal, especially when they don't write back to you. Um, into by instead of being a trendsetter by being themselves. Well, I'm a trendsetter. I'm being myself. I'm giving blood in all sorts of weird country. You know, here I, go, I tend to go, uh, I tend to give blood outside of my circle or zone, which is, um, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I've gone all over the world, and hopefully if America, if, if California, if San Francisco perhaps, uh, wins the, the privilege bid, the privilege bid to host the Olympic Games I'm definitely going to volunteer there I want to go to you know, give blood in California maybe suck up the rays in Venice Beach where all the beautiful people are and I definitely I definitely give going hiking in the uh, you know that, that little that little park where Hollywood sign is I would like to go up to the Hollywood sign take some pictures of me there there are homeless people there, so that's okay. They're humans too. Uh, they're camping out in the in the Hollywood Hill area. Uh, you know, I tend to go camp to go hiking around the around the parks, and I definitely go. I definitely do. I definitely uh, like to go go up to the uh, the Innes House, which uh, which is uh, the outside exterior for the uh, Trump Mansion. Of uh, it's right next to. Uh, it's very close by Dodger Stadium, L.A. Dodger Stadium. Hell, I might even want to move to Los Angeles. I, I know, I know, the earthquake prone and it's got the bad smog. It's because, uh, well, but um, it's only because of the the, the wind currents. That's the way. Right, and also lots of cars. Lots of people want to live there. Uh, but yeah, hopefully the hopefully I can head out there. And, you know, I'm a trendsetter. Um, uh, I do things that are trendy. 
uh, team killing videos in the text-based game. That's trendy. If it's not trendy, it's just whatever I want to do. Instead of being offensive by being themselves, I'm also into porn. Well, I'm a dude, right? But being in the state of Texas, which restricts the images of sexually explicit photos in prisons, I'm pretty sure it's worse living in China or or Japan. That's uh, that's pretty unhuman. Like, I mean, <coughs> that's pretty that's pretty low, uh, Texas. I mean, sure that there's such a sure that there's psycho killers of any ethnicity in there, but they're humans, you know. I mean, give them something. I mean. Well, I know they're being punished because they, 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 they destroyed life and whatnot and caused so much trouble and pain to uh, survivors and family members, but I'm pretty sure it's worse living in China or Japan. So I have to settle for imagine it for for a magazine publication of only half-naked women. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, just regular people wearing bikinis and whatnot. Have naked women feel my pain. Feel my pain. Living a life of celibacy is not all that's what's cracked up to be. Now to answer a few of your questions. Few of the questions that you've asked. Unfor <coughs> Unfortunately, no, we do not have air conditioning in the maximum security prison facilities in Texas. I have lived without AC now for over five years, as the climate down here varies from which region of Texas that you live in. Uh, where I'm located now in Kennedy, Texas, it's mostly humid. It could easily touch to 100 degrees down here for most for most um, parts of the summer. With the heat uh, index, with with the heat index, we could pass, we could we could be close to one of the one to 110. Oh, uh, 110. Okay, so 110 degrees. Uh, through 115, seeing that everything is made of steel and concrete with only a 12-inch wind whirlwind fan per, per, per person in a two-man cell. So at least at least these people got uh, got got um, fans in there uh, that they're not going to be totally baking and soaking in death. Um, but it is a prison. You did kill someone, so and you are a douchebag. You didn't write back to me, so you get to be part of my show, Edward. Um, I'm pretty sure you're sweating thinking about it. How much time do we have left? Uh, okay, uh, thinking about it. This is what my life has become. This is this is what my life has come to. Pretty impressive, huh? Believe it or not, you kind of get used to it. After a while, I read your letter that you wanted to volunteer at the Pan Am Games in Toronto. What what was it that you did while you were volunteering? Uh, to answer your question, I worked in the uh, I worked in the um, transport uh, hub. Uh, that's the the that's the part of the uh, that's the part of the uh, athletes' village where all the buses come in. Um, the and then the buses head out throughout the day. The buses head out to take the uh, take the um, athletes their equipment to the uh, game venues. Um, sometimes athletes can get rides in, and they go up through the they go in from the main entrance. Um, that's another that's another part of the transport hub. Um, we also arrange. Uh, Know, buses to get them out to the airport because there uh, the 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 maximum capacity of an of, of, of an athlete's village will be roughly about one thousand ours was maybe sixteen hundred people but there's over eight thousand athletes and their families the families get to stay in a uh, in a hotel uh, that's organized by the games I believe or uh, that's how it was for the uh, Van Pan Van uh, Van Ock games the Van Ock games in uh, Vancouver. Um, High security, of course. High security um, in the in the athletes' village. Uh, but however, it's very Spartan. There's like there's like five athletes in one little, one little. I mean, this whole room here will be a, a complete suite of the uh, athletes' village because we. Um, so, there are smaller apartments. Um, <coughs> maybe this will be the. This will be maybe. Maybe this will be the living room. Yeah, this will be the living room, and they have the uh, thin stairs up uh, to the kitchen, or maybe to uh, upstairs room. Uh, in, in, um, yeah, <coughs> and the thing is, they have bunk beds. They have one set of bunk beds here, one set of bunk beds there. Uh, they put me in the Bandrock games. They put, uh, they put, they had, they had trailers set up for the some athletes. 
and they put us all in here for the trailers uh, in the trailers they're pretty it's okay I pretended I was a, I was a space miner so I was working for the, the, the transport hub uh, I've watched most of those games on TV the CFL is aired airing on ESPN right now uh, Wow CF uh, CFL ESPN in America we watch those games also whenever they come onto TV. The regular season of the NHL kicks off in a couple weeks. Seeing that I'm from Dallas, you should know that I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. Are you into sports? Ah, uh, yes, I'm into watching it and playing it. Uh, I'll be taking up fencing lessons very soon. And I'll be jogging around the neighborhood trying to get myself ready for the uh, uh, voluntary, or no, uh, Navy Reserves. Uh, get more money, get, get more slight income coming in, get a pension going and everything, get a tour for countries. Uh, are you into sports? If if I'm not reading, sports is almost almost about the only other activity that I've captured my attention. I play chess and dominoes at a fairly high skill set mainly, that's good, chess. Uh, I like to read um, and look at pictures and magazines because it helps me get my mind out of the uh, confines of the structure of the prison system. Besides traveling, what do you normally do to occupy your time with? Uh, volunteering and studying for school and getting myself ready for vocational training and jobs. Um, I'm, a, uh, I'm a Trekkie, I also am a Brony and I also do this um, occasionally when I, ha when I have my Sunday evenings off just take 15 minutes to video graph a funny video of me team killing and trolling a uh, I, I make trolling videos, I make uh, project videos, I'll be showing you guys my plants very soon um, <coughs> uh, you're not traveling around the world uh, do you take any pictures when you go traveling around the world? yes I do uh, most people that travel, I, uh, that travel often do uh, also I don't know if you have constant access to the internet but seeing that it is 20 of 2015, I figure that you do. As uh, as soon as as soon as we see fit, go to j jpay.com and set and set up an account where you write me through jpay. I normally when you write to me through jpay, I usually get your letter the same day. And if not, I'll just get it the next day. The postage is the same, just a quicker correspondence. I've only been out of the si outside of Texas just once, so I've never really had the chance to experience as much as as other country as much as other countries and cities around the world. So I want to thank you for letting me travel with you, even if it's just through letters. I appreciate it a lot. If you don't mind, I would like you to do my do do something for me. Um, I would like you to do something for me. You know that this is my first letter to you, but I still have to ask. Please don't ever stop being you. You have a genuine charismatic uh, aria, aura speaking through your speaking through your letters, the reeking from your letters, and that's important in their friendship, knowing the person you're dealing with. All I ask is that you keep getting to know each other. As always, keep it real with me. Lying to me is a sign of disloyalty, and that goes further with me. Uh, the, that goes further with me than anything else in a relationship. Loyalty. And underlines loyalty. Um, I always tell you the truth, no matter what. Uh, but anyway, thank you for writing to me. I need a good laugh sometimes, and that's exactly what you brought to me in my life. Thank you, Eric. This is very polite. Li this is very polite letter handwriting. Um, I'll be selling this. I don't think I can get much of this in, in murder in, on the murder murder websites uh, because um, he's he's a nondescript person. Only probably just killed one. He probably just only killed one person in the public park, perhaps. I'm not sure. I'm not, I can't really uh, racially stereotype him, but it's probably. I don't know. I don't know what, what why he killed someone. Um, but he killed someone, so. Um, that's Eric Edwards. Uh, further episodes, we'll be writing. We'll be reading a correspondence from Krista Pike. And from. I don't know. I forgot this guy's name, but he was a school shooter. And I'm sure these are more notorious letters, and they'll go for top dollar. Uh, I'll be um, selling them, uh, or no, perhaps not. I don't think I'll be getting top dollar for him. I'll be selling some of these to Murderbilia. Um, but anyways, we're coming up to our 15-minute mark, so thank you for watching our show.
I'm gonna be right back. Okay, yeah, so Eric Edwards is glad that you weren't electrocuted with old sparky. <laughs> 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 <laughs>